Good morning, everyone. It's Gary from Soccer Pro, and today I have the honor of having Michael Trussin with me from Sheffield Wednesday. Today we'll be talking about grassroots coaching. And Michael, if you could, how about introducing yourself and giving us a little bit more detail about your experience and especially what you've been doing with the pro teams and how that relates to grassroots coaching. Yeah, hi, Gary. Yeah, so working backwards through my career, I, I was recently assistant manager and first team coach at Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. Uh, Sheffield are a team in the English Championship, the one below the Premiership. Prior to that, I was European scout for Celtic. I was European scout for West Bromwich Albion, who were then in the Premier League. I worked as a scout for numerous professional football clubs. I've been uh, coaching at a professional level. I was a coach educator for the English Football Association, delivering coach education qualifications. And prior to that, I was a professional football player for a number of clubs, including Brighton and Sheffield United, for over 18 years. So all in all, I've been in professional football since the age of 16, some 40 odd years now. Wow, that's a pretty long career you have going there. So what do you have coming out now? You've got this grassroots mission that you're taking on board. What has inspired you to go down that route? Grassrootscoaching.com is a website that I've owned for over 10 years. In its first instances, it was a subscription-based website and still is. And what we do is we use uh, 3D animation to create sessions and drills that were primarily for coaches. So across a range of topics such as dribbling, running with the ball, shooting, etc. The, the, the website was searchable by age, ability, skill level. And, you know, it worked on a very simple principle. A picture is worth a thousand words. Yep. So we focused on making sure visually that coaches could see and understand and develop coaching sessions that could improve them as coaches and help their players. It's taken a back seat in the last couple of years because of my uh, scouting and coaching roles that I've taken on board. Um, and I'm now in a position where I, I, I've really looked at it and decided that I want to make all the content I have, some 300 sessions, I want to make it free. So wow. we've developed a YouTube channel. Um, we're going out on social media. Um, and, you know, there are no strings attached to this. Any coaches, any players, any teams, any uh, uh, associations who think that it's worth a look, very simply look at grassrootscoaching.com on YouTube and we will be putting all of our content for free to air on, on YouTube and other social media outlets. The idea really is from an income level point of view, if we generate enough hits, then these kind of social media websites will pay you money for advertising and etc. There's the potential sponsorship you know, the, the, this, this has a holistic approach. Thirdly, after all the years I've been playing and coaching the game, I feel that I have something to offer to assist predominantly grassroots coaches and players. And indeed players, there's a, there's a big emphasis on player sessions that the players can facilitate and organize themselves to develop their own playing skills. It works upon a very simple week, I call it, when I did the coach education, qualifications it was very much a kiss approach so kiss for those that don't know stands for keep it simple stupid so you know these are sessions that any coach can look at and use develop individualize but gives them motivation and inspiration of how to develop and improve players in certain areas of their play well, that's an interesting point. There's a lot of player-centric training programs that have come out in the last, well, especially the last year since COVID. So is your system focused more on individual player development, or are you trying to help the coaches do player development on a team level? Both. I mean, so, so, so basically it's layered, okay? So there will be lots of sessions for individual players that they can practice in their back garden. So, for example... Mm -hmm. I have an eight-year-old grandson who's a very keen, enthusiastic footballer. We've been filming him in my back garden where we've been working on his quick feet fitness and then introducing a ball so that he has lots of touches of the ball related to the quick feet fitness. Then there are sessions where the player can, pra again, practice on their own in terms of passing, turning, dribbling, individual skills, right? Challenges. And then there, we, 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 then we grade it up to where two players are then involved. So at this point, there's no need for a coach intervention. These are, these are uh, sessions that the players can facilitate themselves. So then we move into two players. So, you know, pass and move in two, pass and support in two, yep. run with the ball in two. So this challenges to those sessions and the players can facilitate themselves. 
Then we start to move up to a level where there might be now some coach intervention because of the number of players involved. So we might move into a functional practice that involves rotating crossing um, that would, Im- would work on the technique and then develop into a skill and then develop into a small-sided game. And then for those coaches that want to, who've got older players and, and a greater number of players, we move into functional practices. So develop crossing in a small-sided game, overloads in midfield in an 8v8 game how to attack the defence in a phase of play. Um, and then we move into small-sided game from 4v4 to 8v8. How do you coach a team in a small-sided game? How do you coach them to defend more effectively? How do you coach them to attack more uh, effectively? How do, you, how do you coach them to improve running with the ball in a small-sided game? So you can see how the themes then link in all the way through from sure. individual player skills all the way to team games. Yeah, it sounds like you've scaled it up all the way from the individual to small-sided games to full scrimmages and everything in between. Absolutely. And, and you know, the, the great thing then is that the coaches and or the players can select what sessions that they think are relevant to their needs. They can watch them. There's explanations in terms of how you organize this, what the key coaching factors are, how the progressions will be linked in. Um, and as I say, I mean, the great thing about it is for free. Now, the, the other great advantage of this is, is that many of the sessions are geared around worldwide coaching qualifications. So, for example, in America, if a person is taking a coaching qualification, then they can look at these sessions and take out the, the basic principles that they can then apply on their coaching qualification. Right. I mean, there's no point to reinvent the wheel over and over and over again. It's better to take a guide. Absolutely. You know, and, and you know, the, the, the great thing about, you know, any coaching session is, is it's subjective. You know, you don't look at it and go, right. this is what I must do. You right. know, you look at it and go, well, that's good. That's really good. I like that organization. I would have it with four players rather than six players. So it's not, it's not a, a you know, hard and fast guide. It's a directional uh, information. Right. More like a framework. We all look at what other people are doing. Like, oh, I like that. And I like that. And you take a piece from here and a piece from there and you add your own Absolutely. pieces in there. And before you know it, you modify it and tweak it and it becomes your own. Absolutely. But, you know, again, I go back to this. The great thing about it is it's free. It's designed and written by myself and, you know, over 45 years of, of professional playing, coaching, scouting, managerial experience, coach educational, which is, you know, hugely relevant in terms yep. of, you know, what, how does a coach think? What does a coach want? How, how does that session progress into that session? So coaches can look at these sessions visually, explore and see how they're organized, how they're structured, how they progress, what are the key coaching factors, and kind of go out and mimic them and then tweak them to their own benefit. The other great mm-hmm. thing is they can send them to the players before training to say, you know, have a look at this. This is what our training session is going to consist right. of tonight because they can download them and send them through. And from a player's point of view, one of the key questions I always ask is, is when you ask a player to do something uh, from a coaching perspective, why? Mm-hmm. why? Why do you want the player to do that, right? And if, if you can get the player to buy into the why, then the player is more likely to do it. So in this case, what we've got are individual and pair skill comp challenges and competitions that challenge the players to improve and develop their skill under a little bit of pressure and develop it, but also to understand why. Why do you run with the ball in a football match? What's the purpose? So if you buy into the why, well, the why we do is to progress up the pitch quickly, right, to right. engage the opposition, to create space for our own players and to create potential scoring opportunities. That's why we do it. The next bit is how do you do it? Mm-hmm. So the, the, the sessions help the players then develop the technical aspect of how they actually run with the ball and what the end result is. And then it's a practice situation. So in this case, it's how do two players develop and improve running with the ball so that when they get into a game situation, they've got the technical ability, but more importantly, they understand why they're doing it and how they do it. And you have an interesting perspective, I think, as a scout, you've seen from coming up as a player, and now you've seen from a scouting position and understanding and listening to what other coaches want from a player, to then being able to put that all into your training program and say, well, look, this is what it's going to take to be this player that these coaches are actively going to want. This is what attracts the scouts. And you put that in. So I'm kind of curious, how did your coaching, let's say philosophy, your approach to coaching change after you became a scout and started hearing from these coaches and understanding what it is that they wanted from players that you were supposed to go out and scout? Well, I think it it really came because I was a a player and a a coach before I became a scout. 
Mm -hmm. So I had a view, I had a, a quite strong view on, on, you know, what you want for want from professionally from players in certain positions. So, for example, a centre half uh, as a central defender. What would I want from a central defender to play in my team professionally? Mm -hmm. OK, so you start with the basic. OK, so can they head it? Can they cover? Can they defend space? Can they read the game? Can they do blocks? Can they defend the far post on crosses? Can they get across attackers in, in the penalty area? Can they defend the goal? Right? Have they got patience? So, mm -hmm. you know, you have a checklist of what you want out of that player. And therefore, you work on those aspects in training to develop and improve right. those aspects. So sometimes you take them out of the training session and you just might simply work as a pair and knock long balls in like a goalkeeper kicks or fullbacks knocking the ball in. And you mm -hmm. quite simply go, take your position from where the ball is and where your goal is. One attack it, one get around on the cover and communicate. Mm -hmm. So you work on the basic principle of do not let one ball beat both of you. One, you attack it. And if it's missed, you get around on the cover. And then you build those layers up in a coaching session until you eventually put them into a functional game like where there's opposition players and there's the, the, the opportunity for opposition players to score against them. And you test them. OK, so that's what you're looking for. And then obviously, if you look for in possession, particularly nowadays, what are they like in possession? Do they do they want the ball? Are they calm in possession? Can they pass it? How effective they're passing? Do they take chances on the ball, etc.? cetera? And you, again, you would work on that in training sessions. Right. So now you scale that up to what I'm scouting. So I've got this mental checklist of what I'm looking for in the centre half for the club I'm scouting for. And it depends on the level. You know, the higher the level, the more the more of these attributes you want. But you can't get away from. So, again, taking the opportunity of central defending. You know, why did Liverpool pay 75 million for Van Dijk? And why has Van Dijk been so effective for Liverpool in their European quest and their premiership quest? And, and you know, there's no question he's been the best centre half before his injury. Well, predominantly because he does the basics of defending better than anyone else. It's as simple as that. So that's what you're looking for. Right In a player, when you're scouting, you're looking for those qualities. Now, you're not going to get a Van Dijk, it's unlikely. But, you know, you kind of go, well, he's got the potential to grow and develop. He's already there as a centre-half to be able to play at this level. And so, therefore, you're using your coaching knowledge and your playing knowledge, because I played centre-half at times, to then reinforce your scouting philosophy and what you're looking for in a player. Sure. And I would assume right now with everything being shut down, that having a program like grassroots coaching is going to help these kids at least get out and stay, well, stay current with their skills and hopefully build them up a little bit because sometimes during the season, they don't have the chance to work on individual skills as much as maybe they should. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, if you're going to have some fun doing it and, and develop mm -hmm. some fitness levels whilst doing it and you're doing rep a repetitive skill practice in a fun, engaging way, that is also competitive and challenging, then that repetitiveness of, of working on those skills as an individual and that self-analysis of why did I run successfully with the ball in that situation and why didn't I in that situation, right? And while well, they can watch a video that explains how the structure of the session works and how it progresses and what they should and why they should be doing, it yep. can only assist them. Absolutely. So let's bounce back just to the uh, program. So we've got the students, or let's say the players, who are the yeah. individual students of your program. Then you've got the coaches, which are going to look at yeah. them the coaching curriculum. And yeah. that's going to be free for them as well, right? Yes. Okay. So that And also for, as I said, you know, if, you, if you're a club, so, you know, in America, it's, it's you know, perhaps a, a more developed model of the clubs for, for grassroots young players. And they might well have a cohort of 15, 20, 25 coaches, okay? And what this will enable the coach coordinator to do is to pick out what sessions are relevant for the age groups and what the curriculum is and be able to put together a series of uh, videos, training sessions, mm -hmm. that they can forward on to their coaches to say, guys, tonight for the under 10s, we'll start with this warm up. We will move into this individual practice. We'll move into this small sided game. We'll move into that large small sided mm -hmm. game. I want you to take certain players out and work on their first control and support, their first touch and support, and their passing. And here are the videos that I want you to watch so you understand as coaches what we're doing tonight sure. you can put your own twist on it but there it is so no longer is it written on the back of a, an envelope and 
it, there is a structure. It enables the, the, the organization to structure their training sessions specifically about what they want to do. And there are visually orientated videos that enable them to see that and then put into place those sessions. Right. Actually, it just makes it a lot easier too. As, as someone who coaches for a while, it's easy to get caught into a rut where all of a sudden you're like, oh, now what are we going to do? We've been doing the same thing. So I need to freshen it up a little bit. And Absolutely. Things like this can just, you know, you don't have to embrace everything, but if you just go through, you can go like, oh, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. That's a great thing. And I know I personally uh, will, let's say, borrow a lot of stuff that I see online because I see a trainer do something. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a great idea. I never thought of that. And then I'll just go take that and incorporate it in and, and it becomes part of my session. Absolutely. You know, so this is the whole idea of making all this content for free because, you know, I've spent four years developing this knowledge. You know, I've spent yep. 10, 12 years putting the content together. And as a business model, it's not working because subscription on the Internet is a, is a failing business. Mm -hmm. So I look at it and go, well, what am I going to do? Keep it a secret? Or right. do I put it out there for free? Okay. And encourage people and hopefully people watch it, enjoy it, find it useful, share the information with other coaches and other players. And it might well turn out that that is my business model because of the numbers involved. You know, football, soccer is a worldwide game. So, you know, this could go to China, it could go to Thailand, the Middle East, the Far East, America, et cetera. Um, and then all of a sudden, you develop an advertising revenue. Well, that's great because at the end of the day, I'm a professional person. I'm a businessman. But if it doesn't, then it's not sitting on a, on a, on a website that's locked out because you have to subscribe to it. You know, it's funny. As, uh, as the kids move out of the house and you start to change your perspective on things, you start thinking about that and going, look, I'm either going to use this or I'm going to throw it in the bin. But I'm not yeah. going to keep it anymore. I'm not just going to store it. I'm going to use it or get rid of it. And it sounds like yeah. you've taken that same perspective with your soccer training program, your grassroots coaching yeah. program. And you just said, look, I'm either going to do something with it or I'm going to throw it in the bin. And I may as well share it and, and get it out into the world. And if it takes off and I can make money off YouTube advertising, which is what a lot of people do, I think that's a good Yeah, idea. absolutely. Why not? You know, and... and you know, the fact of the matter is that I used to put together CDs so, um, mm -hmm. or, or, or put them onto a memory stick. Um, so I would take, when I, when I worked for the English Football Association, for example, I might be coaching the UEFA B coaching license, which is a high standard. And there's a certain curriculum regarding that, okay? And I would create sessions that were specific to that curriculum but mm -hmm. with my own individual take on it. So this is, these are the sessions that I would coach and demonstrate on the course. And you as a candidate would look at those sessions and go, okay, I understand in a small-sided game that I'm going to coach one team but organize both. The topic is key. So the mm -hmm. topic might be overloads in the midfield third. So what does that mean? Okay, so here's a session that gives you six examples of how you would develop overloads in the midfield third. What does that mean? And why would you do it? Well, if you watch modern football today, it's all about territory and possession. Right. So to, to keep possession and to beat teams through possession, you need to overload areas so that you can keep the ball away because you've got more numbers in that area than the opposition have. Mm -hmm. So that it gives you a numerical advantage. So how do you do that? So the videos would demonstrate that. The, the coaches could then watch it and it improved their performance massively when it comes to their practical examination. Right. Because they had visual reference guide that they could go back to all the time. If you really break it down, we've talked about three things. Individual player development. You have yeah. coaching sessions for just helping them come up with new ideas, systematic ideas for their actual team club practices. Yeah. And then yes. you could also use it for your certifications, your licensing. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, whatever country you're in, whatever certification you, you take, there are three basic principles of football you have to adhere to that, that it related to a game, mm -hmm. right? When you've got the ball, what do you do? Well, you create space. You make the pitch as big as you can, right? So that offensively, it creates space. When you haven't got the ball, you make the pitch as small as you can. You narrow it off, you defend central, and you compact it. And then the third one is in transition. So how quickly do you go from attack to defense and from defense to attack? Mm -hmm. They're the principles of the game. Yep. Everything else just works around those principles of the game. So 
all the sessions and all the skill sessions, they work around. Now, if you break that down to uh, the individual ones for the players, then one of the ways that you, uh, you, you're going to apply uh, an offensive principle is the ability to pass the ball forward, mm -hmm. to get players to run forward. So that you can hurt the opposition with a forward pass and a forward run. Or to dribble, to beat somebody in a tight area, to take an opponent out. Or to pass and support successfully, so you pass around a team. Or yeah. to run with the ball to engage the opposition and carry the pitch for the ball further up the pitch. Mm -hmm. So the principles of the game are then linked in to the individual and group techniques related to the principles of the game. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So one more time, what is the website? What is the URL that people will need to go to in order to find your program? And at the moment, we're in the early stages of this. So if you go to um, grassrootscoaching.com, grassrootscoaching, okay. all one word, .com, then you will see at the moment it's a, still a subscription model, but mm -hmm. there are some examples on it of what it's about. Okay. If you go onto YouTube and type in grassrootscoaching.com, that is where over a period of time, if you subscribe also, which helps us, there will be appearing as we, as we download the content from grassrootscoaching.com onto YouTube and onto Instagram and Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, right? then that's where all these sessions will appear. They will be, you know, they will be in chapters, they will be linked, and they'll be free. Very okay. simply, they'll be free. What we ask of people, if you like it, then share it. All right, share sweet. the link on YouTube with other coaches, with other players. Just share it. If you like it, subscribe to it so that we can inform you every time we download a new session and, and you know, you're in front of the queue to watch it. That's Actually, all. And they want to get the notifications. So not only subscribe, but hit that notification bell because the subscription won't always give you the notification of a new upload of the video. So make sure you subscribe and you hit the notifications bell to make sure you get the most current uploads. So just, I want to bounce back because grassroots coaching, that's a pretty popular term. I mean, it's uh, amazing. You have that as a URL. Congratulations on that. So when they go to YouTube and they type in grassroots coaching, there's a lot of things that are going to come up. How do they get right to your channel? Do they put in grassroots coaching as one word? Is that how you're getting that search result to come to your channel? Now you've got me here, Gary, okay. right? Okay. I can talk all day about football. I can talk all day about football, but at the moment, and all I know is that we on YouTube, we have a grassroots coaching channel. So I'm assuming if you, you type in grassroots coaching, we'll appear there somewhere. Other than that, I can't help you a great deal. So I'm, right. I'm sure that this YouTube channel is going to be a huge success, but it's probably not going to be through my technical ability. Well, you know what we can do? We can't do it right now, but after this interview, we'll go find that and then we'll inject that uh, exact address into this video. So everyone knows how to get to grassrootscoaching.com. Again, great URL. Yeah. It's uh, amazing you got that one. So grassrootscoaching.com. And then we'll yeah. put the uh, YouTube channel name into this video so that you can get directly to YouTube and get the free videos. And again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notifications button so that you get the notification when there's a new upload of the free videos. That will be great. And for those that do go to the channel on YouTube, there are probably 10 or 12 videos on at the moment, but we're in the process of downloading them at a rapid rate. So again, that whole subscribe and notify is gonna be really important because you will get you know, get that notification when the, when the new videos are downloaded. Yep. That's great stuff. So I look forward to looking at some of those videos, because like I said, I'm always in the need of new sessions, new ideas, new plans for our own stuff. And uh, yeah. there's no better way to get that idea than from looking at what other people like yourself has done already. So, absolutely. well, I really appreciate you taking the time today to come and tell us about your program. Again, that's grassrootscoaching.com. Go to the YouTube yeah. channel for the free videos, coaching sessions, individual sessions. And if you're going through your licensing certifications, make sure you go there because you'll get a head start. You'll get a guide on the things you need to know and the things that you'll need to bring to that certification. So make your life easy and just go watch the videos. Well, again, I appreciate you taking the time out today and uh, hope no problem. that you back here and uh, talk to us more as time goes by and you get more videos up and we have a chance to dig deeper into that system. I look forward to that. All right. Thank you. Bye now. Take, take care and keep safe.